Welcome to the Livonia City Council. Sorry we had a little technical difficulty, but we're back in touch. Uh, the council uh, member, Kathy White, Councilwoman White, will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. We all rise. For allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councilwoman White. And thank you to the young man in the audience. We heard you up here. You did a great job of the pledge. Thank you. Uh, we'd like to welcome you to the May 20th of uh, the study session of the Livonia City Council. This meeting sets the agenda for the 1,874th regular meeting, which will be a voting meeting that will take place on Monday, June the 3rd. We do have a couple council absences tonight. Councilman Meekham will not be here, nor will Councilman Kritzman. Um, Council, is there any announcements you may have or any guests you'd like to introduce? Already, um, we um, send out our good wishes to our mayor as well. Um, and also, council, we have new data on item four. Uh, this is a study session. There will be no vote taken this evening. The council members will, however, offer either a resolution or a combination of resolutions for each item. The resolution offered may include an approving, a denying, or a referring resolution to a committee or a city department for the report and recommendation. Uh, others will simply be received and filed for the information of the council. Please note that tonight's agenda will move on to our regular meeting, which will be held again on Monday, June the 3rd, where they will be officially voted on. If you'd like to participate tonight in uh, any item on the yellow sheet, which is our agenda outside the door, please approach podium to my left or to my right and give us your name and address, and we'll be happy to hear your comments. Okay, Council, we have new data as well on item four, and we will move into our um, audience communication. Anyone wishing to address the Council on any item that's not on the yellow sheet, if you would approach the podium to the left or right. I see no one approaching. Okay, then we'll move into item one, which is a block party. This is, um, Tracy, are you here tonight? Um, no? Okay, um, to be held on Saturday, August the 10th from 4 to 10 on Marie Court between Nelson and Minton with a rain date of Saturday, August 17th. Madam President. She's been here before. I yes, go right ahead, Councilman. Uh, if I remember correctly, I believe this is an annual event. Mm -hmm. um, the paperwork looks to be in order. I have no problem offering this for an approval on the consent agenda. Okay, great. Thank you. We have an um, on consent. As an approval, was there anyone else wishing to offer anything else from the council? Anyone from the audience? Hearing and seeing no one, we'll move on to item two then, which uh, is Rebecca here this evening for the block party? There you are, all right. Uh, to be held on Saturday, September 28th of this year from two to eight on Park Lane Street between Margarita and Clarita with a rain date of Saturday, October the 5th. You wanna tell us a little bit about what you'd like to do? This will be our third annual block party for our street. We have great participation every single year. It's always the last weekend in June for National Good Neighbor Day because we've got the best neighbors ever. So it's just a fun time, very kid friendly. And this year we're hoping to make it a little bit bigger and have a bouncy house and some other kid friendly activities. That's great, great, well congratulations. <laughs> Council, your direction or pleasure on a block party. Councilwoman Mack. I'd like to offer the approving resolution for the consent, I mean, for the consent if there are no objections. And it is uh, always wonderful to see Livonians here who are organizing block parties and getting neighbors together and uh, just congratulations and thanks for your work and initiative on putting this together. I'm sure your neighbors appreciate it. I hope they you have a it. great party. And so you know that means you don't have to come back. Okay. Really? To the, to the, <laughs> oh yes. Yeah, to I the knew. next meeting. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. okay. we're going to do this every year so you'll see me again. Okay. Great. <laughs> Great, thank you, Councilwoman. Go right ahead, Council so, President. Thank you, Madam President. Earlier tonight, you mentioned that you attended the uh, Baldrick's event. Yes. Um, the star and the promoter of that event uh, is uh, Mr. Juzwicki, who's, wow. who's here as well. Um, so I guess just on behalf of Council and the city, I just congratulate you and thank you for your efforts. And I'll, I'll make a note that I make a, a, a point 
to travel two blocks to harass this uh, particular block party every year and make sure that everything's okay. <laughs> so. uh, since, since I need to stay on topic, thank you for always uh, coming and harassing us uh, on our street. Uh, Mr. Jolly lives uh, just, just around the block from our neighborhood and has a lot of school friends uh, on the street. Um, and thank you as well, uh, Madam President, for coming and joining us and shaving my co-organizer's head yesterday. Yeah. On as you can it's see, a, a, a number of us ended up with haircuts. Yes. Um, we'll, we'll see if maybe Jim will do it next year. I don't know <laughs> what you guys think. My hair is falling out. <laughs> As we speak, it's on the desk. <laughs> even more, even better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not a resolution that needs approval. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Well, it sounds like. Uh, do we get an approving from C Councilwoman McIntyre? So you're all set. Fantastic. Unless you want your hair shaved again. No. I'm good. Okay. I've not great. done it yet. I have not braved the shave. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank have you a good night. for your involvement. We appreciate it so much. Okay. Uh, Council, then we're going to move to item three is a request to waive a sidewalk requirement. Is, is Larry Perry here? Could you approach the podium, sir, and give us your name and address for a single family home to be constructed at 10166 Laurel? Sir. My name is Larry Perry. My address is 39019 Stacy Drive in Livonia, 48154. Okay, thank you. And what would you like to do on this, sir? I would like to waive the, uh, the sidewalk. Nobody has a sidewalk in the entire area. It would just look odd to have one house, brand new house, with a sidewalk. Okay. All righty. Uh, council, there's new, oh no, that's the next one we have new information on. Um, your pleasure, your comments. Madam President. Yes, please go right I ahead. looked this over. He's exactly right. There's not another s sidewalk anywhere in the vicinity. Um, I'd offer an approving resolution for this for consent if there's no objection. Council, any objection or com further comment? Hearing and seeing none, anyone from the audience? You have an approving on consent, you don't need to come back, and it sounds like you don't need to have a sidewalk either. <laughs> no. Thank you very much. You Please. won twice on that one. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yes, sir. Will thank they you. Uh, tell me something on, in, uh, on, on paperwork, or I just, how will I know? Uh, yes, go ahead. Mr. Zelensky, our city engineer, will explain. If you can have your uh, person that's going to do the final grade certificate, we can give the council resolution for tonight's meeting in the future so you have that to put on the final grade certificate for approval. So work with the engineering department. We'll have the council resolution to the clerk's office to make sure you're abreast of the uh, proper uh, CR number, council resolution number. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Perry. Have Much success to you, sir. Okay. Uh, was there any comment from the audience? No? Okay. Item four is a request to waive a sidewalk requirement again. Frank, are you here? Yes, here he comes. Manchina, is that how you pronounce it, sir? That's how they pronounced it. Um, many years ago? Many years ago okay. in, uh, in the old country. That was it, <laughs> I thought so. Uh, okay, you want, uh, let's see, Manchina Construction LLC for a single family home to construct at 29106 Broadmoor. Go right ahead, sir. Uh, essentially, I'm, I'm asking the same thing as the previous candidate. Um, oh, give us the, your address, sir. And I'm sorry. Your name. Um, 14 Frank Mancina, okay. 14700 Gary Lane. Okay. And um, I'm I'm asking for the the same type of waiver. There is no um, sidewalks at all on the entire street of Broadmoor. Okay. Appreciate that, Councilman Barr, our expert on sidewalk. Uh, <laughs> I'm teasing you. Uh, any comments, Council? Madam President. Yes, please go ahead, Councilman. Same situation as the other. Um, okay. Yes, I know I've had some strong opinions on sidewalks, but each of those um, each of those waivers that I've made more of an issue of have been where we've had patchwork situations on Absolutely. the street. This is another situation where on the street there's nothing else. Um, doesn't make sense. I'd offer approval um, for consent if there's no objection. Certainly, good call. Thank you. Um, right now you have an approving on consent, meaning you don't need to come back and you okay. don't need a sidewalk. It's a good night to be here on Sidebox. Great. Okay. I'm going to watch my son play yeah. hockey now. Okay, go have fun. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Uh, and I didn't see anyone rushing up from the audience. Okay. Item five, Council, is a request for an authorization to approve a five-year contract 
uh, with RouteMatch Software, the sole source provider for the Department of Resources for software and technical support with the Livonia Community Transit Program for a period December of 2018 through November of 2023 for budget of funds. Director McCann. Yes, I'd like to, I'm here tonight to ask approval for the five-year contract with RouteMatch. We're using them as sole source because all our software, our routing software, the tablets on the bus, everything runs through them. <clears throat> the first year is a little less, as you can see, and that's because we prepaid for some equipment, computers, tablets, the license <clears throat> for the operators. I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> Councilman McIntyre. I would be happy to offer the um, approving resolution for this on consent if there are no objections. I've um, been over at the Transportation Center many times and see how things work over there and um, also would just like to extend a thank you to Mrs. McCann and Felicia Cross who worked very hard to find a driver yesterday to um, provide a bus for transportation for uh, 22 very uh, enthusiastic uh, senior citizens who enjoyed the LCC concert. You're welcome. So, it was a good trip. They had a great time. <coughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I think we have an approving then and consent. Was that no it? objections? Uh, certainly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming in tonight. Okay. Um, I see no one running up from the audience on that, so we'll move to item six. six. Uh, request for authorization to purchase one trailer mounted asphalt hot box through the National Cooperative Purchasing Alliance. This is brought to us from the Public Service Division for use by the Roads Department. Mr. Moore. Good morning, Council. Good morning. Good evening, Council. <laughs> Doug Feels Moore like with the Public Service <laughs> Division. We're looking to purchase a trailer mounted asphalt hot box. This unit will replace one that was purchased in 2007 that's in poor condition. The metal is rotting, causing holes, and repairs are exceeding the present, or the, the present value. Uh, the units used to keep asphalt patch material hot and more malleable, especially during the winter. Uh, the materials used to patch potholes, water main breaks, in roads and sidewalk vertical separations. The new unit comes with a battery charger, diesel-powered heater, tool rack, solvent tanks, and a safety directional board. Uh, it's being purchased through the National Cooperative Purchasing Alliance, and it's being purchased from Alta Equipment in the amount of $26,688.20. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Um, Madam Chair? Yes, please. I'll offer the approving. Anything that helps us uh, fill potholes is a good thing, so I would ask that this be put on consent. Certainly. There's no objection. Thank you very much. We have an approving on consent council. Anyone else? And President, yes, it's just always a good opportunity to remind our residents that the potholes they deal with on Seven Mile and Merriman and the like are not ours. Those are the counties. <laughs> so, yes, I agree with Councilman White. It's a good thing to do this, but uh, let's just be clear about the, a lot of the potholes we're having problems with aren't ours to deal with. So, thanks. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, we do have an approving on consent. I see no one rushing up, Mr. Moore, so that's what you have an approving on consent. Thank you. Thank Item you. seven, sir, is a um, request for authorization to purchase one 2019 Ford F550 to be upfitted into a signed maintenance vehicle through the State of Michigan Department of Vehicle Procurement and Macomb County Contract 21-18 to replace a vehicle used by signed maintenance from budget of funds, Mr. Moore. This truck will be assigned to the sign maintenance department. Uh, it's being purchased through the state bid with signature Ford out of Owasso as the servicing dealer. The upfitting will be done by VersaLift Midwest out of Shelby Township using the My Deal contract. Outfield, outfitting will include an elevated platform, a jackhammer, storage containers, sign puller, lift gate, and flatbed for movement of signs, cones, barricades, etc. This truck will replace the current frontline unit. That unit will replace the old, old frontline unit, which will be gotten rid of through the auctioning process. Uh, the truck that's, being re that's moving from frontline to secondary is a 2006 era, and the old truck is late 90s. Uh, the cost for the vehicle is $46,551. The upfitting is $41,869 for a total cost of $88,420. Thank you. 
Thank you. Council, your uh, discussion, comments, Sorry. pleasure? Sorry. Madam President? Yes, Vice I'll President. offer an approving for consent. This is um, important stuff, and I trust that DPW does appropriate and necessary work with it, so it's a no-brainer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Vice President has offered an approving on consent. Were there any others? Anyone from the audience wishing to speak so. to this matter? You have an approving on consent by Vice President Jolly, or Mr. Moore. Thank you. Uh, item eight is a request for authorization to purchase three 2019 Ford F-250s and one 2019 F-150 pickup trucks through the State of Michigan Department of Vehicle Procurement and the Macomb County Co-op Award Agreement. This is brought to us from the Public Service Division to replace vehicles used by various departments within the Department of Public uh, services from budget of funds. Mr. Moore. Lastly, these approved are the four trucks were approved in the 2019 20 capital budget. Uh, the trucks are being purchased again through Signature Ford out of Owasso on state contract pricing. The upfitting will also be done by VersaLift Midwest out of Shelby Township for the three F 250s. Uh, that will include running boards, tool kits, plows, light packages, and a combination of an air compressor or a lift gate. And these trucks will be assigned to parks, roads, and water section. The upfitting for the F-150 will be done by truck and trailer specialties. That will include a plow, tool kit, light, and heavy-duty running board. The truck will be used to run parks, pick up items, and carry material for equipment maintenance. It will also be used for snow removal in the winter. Four trucks, circa 2004-2005, are being disposed of through the auction process. Their repairs are exceeding their current value. Uh, total purchase price for the four pickup trucks is $115,943. Total up upfitting for the four trucks is $73,197. The grand total for everything is $189,140. Thank you very much. Councilwoman McIntyre. I would be happy to offer the approving resolution on consent. Uh, all of the paperwork is in order. We're using, um, as always, uh, the, uh, the appropriate procur pro procurement standards and processes. And also, again, I, I think I've mentioned this before, having had an opportunity to, to go over to the Fleet Center and knowing Mr. Garrison and knowing what an outstanding he job he does, at maintaining our fleet, caring for our fleet, getting the maximum uh, use out of every vehicle we get and uh, the care that he takes with every new vehicle. Um, very comfortable, of course, with this. And of course, it's budgeted fun, so. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, is there anyone from the audience wishing to speak to this? Hearing and seeing no one, you have an approving on consent. Thank you, Council. Certainly. Um, item nine is a word of contract from our engineering division for Whispering Willows Golf Course parking lot improvements. Uh, contract 19M from Budget of Funds. Mr. Zelensic. Thank you, Madam President. As you're aware, uh, Whispering Willows is in need of some parking lot repairs. Uh, originally, when the clubhouse was reconstructed, the drop off area and the portion surrounding the new building was completed over probably 10 years ago. However, the um, Existing parking lot, uh, we band-aided it together with some joint sealing, looking to pulverize the parking lot, add additional new asphalt pavement. The parking lot was designed by the engineering division, put on mitten for four weeks, and the bids were opening on Mar or May 7th. We have six bidders, ranging from $187,856 all the way up to $215,142.50. We had, obviously, some good bidders and some close prices. We're looking to award that bid to an angle paving in the amount of 177,856. In addition, we want to award $10,000 to OHM advisors to help us in the testing of the asphalt and obviously the density test when we build that parking lot back so we can do it to our specifications. If any further questions, I'll be happy to answer those, but the parking lot is looking to be constructed in the month of October and completed by early November Thank on you. the off peak season. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Council. Any comment or direction on this? Madam President. Yes, please go ahead. Well, it's, it's always good to have the ability to invest in our capital here in the city, uh, even when it is for the golf course, which some of us don't get to. If Mr. Meekin was here, I, I would give him a hard time. But 
Some of us get to visit these things more than other people do, but uh, I'm glad to be able to do it for the city, and I'm glad Mr. Zelensky's leading the way. Uh, so I'll offer an approving resolution for consent. Certainly. Thank you very much. That's an approving on consent by the Vice President. Is there any other comments? Anyone from the audience? Seeing and hearing none, then we'll go to item 10, which is a waiver petition from our Planning Commission, petition 20190302 submitted by Players Golf and Event Center South to utilize a Class C liquor license in connection with the operation of an indoor golf and millionaire party charity gaming uh, facility on property located on the south side of Plymouth Road in the northeast quarter of Section 32. Mr. Taramina. Thank you. Again, this is a request for a Class C liquor license. It would be in connection with a new uh, rec indoor recreational use and uh, entertainment venue that would be at the LA Plaza, which is on the south side of Plymouth Road, just east of uh, Levan. And some of you are familiar with the operation. Um, a similar uh, business was opened uh, on 8 Mile at the Fillmar uh, Plaza called uh, Players golf and, and event center. This will be uh, players golf and event center uh, south. And um, it's very similar in nature. The primary use would be uh, golf simulation uh, bays uh, where there would also be a, a small banquet area. Uh, the, um, the owner would host uh, millionaire uh, parties similar to what they do at, uh, at the eight mile uh, location. Uh, these are sanctioned and licensed by the Michigan Gaming Control uh, Board. Uh, the Class C liquor license does have a couple of stipulations. Uh, one um, is that they cannot be located within a thousand feet of any other similar licensed uh, operation. There are two uh, Class C licensed businesses uh, within a thousand feet. Uh, the first it would be Kickers All American Grill, and while that license is presently in escrow, there are plans to reactivate uh, that that license. Um, the other is. Um, Time Out Bar and Grill, which is on the other side of Plymouth Road, about 370 feet uh, from the location. So what the ordinance says is that um, um, if, the, if the proposed use uh, is not uh, used primarily as a dining facility, uh, then the approval uh, uh, has to be granted by city council by separate resolution in which two-thirds of the council member concurs. So in order to allow this uh, waiver use uh, to occur at this location, uh, you will have to waive that separation requirement uh, by two-thirds majority vote. There would be no exterior modifications uh, to the uh, building. This is right in the corner unit. Uh, parking at the plaza is, uh, is more than adequate to accommodate the proposed use, and the Planning Commission is recommending approval of the waiver. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, petitioners, would you like to oh. say? 36115 Plymouth Road is the address. Um, and your name, sir? Mark Scarelli, and it's my wife, Lori Scarelli. Okay. Any, anything you would like to add or? Um, no, it's exactly the same as the other one. Um, we're doing some different stuff out of the eight mile location for the off season for us, which would be the summertime. We've been kind of lucky and had pretty bad April and May so far. So <laughs> it's helped us out a little bit, but we, <laughs> We attend, we know we were we were prepared for the slowing down of the summer, but uh, we had a great winter and fall, and uh, really happy. So we decided to uh, venture in and open up another business. And do you do you run it through this uh, Cantor uh, Real Estate Income and Opportunity Fund? What is that, that is the that's the landlord. Of that's the, the landlord. Yeah, okay. that's I'm the wondering. landlord of the property. Okay. Great, great. How's the parking lot over there? Um, is it, it pretty paved and is there enough room for all those cars? Yeah. I get my nails done right next door there. Yeah, yeah. we're actually two doors down from the nail. There's mm -hmm. a, a vacant spot and then right. we're right where the old bike shop used to be. Yeah, right. And it's pretty, well, the parking lot's sufficient. I haven't driven the whole parking lot to see how, how, how and what kind of condition it is, but it's pretty big. Okay. And there's employee parking in the back of the building, so. Perfect. Okay. All right, yeah. just asking. Yeah. Great, thanks. Okay, uh, anyone? Comments? Yes. Well, thank you, Madam President. Sure. Um, I'll just say, you know, you're always hopeful that people are going to find a niche that works for them and a business that is successful. And clearly, the first location is a success, correct? Yes. Uh, you're confident that you're not creating a competitor for yourself by yourself? I mean, no. Yeah, we, we've had, we had such a high demand for the two simulators 
we have two simulators at eight mile and we've had such a high demand we actually had to turn people away okay. so with being the reason why i wanted to stay in livonia was because on our website when you go in to book a time now we can offer well eight miles full but you know we're very close proximity we have another location now that offers two more simulators okay. so everybody but, asks that question about kind of competing against yourself but um we're going to do different things at the Plymouth location as far as um, we host the charitable, the charitable fundraisers on Wednesday through Saturday on 8 Mile. At the other location, it's going to be uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you know, so that we kind of flip flop it, so. Okay. Um, You know, I don't think that there have been any problems reported with the other location at all. Um, yeah. So I don't see a reason why we shouldn't approve this. I'll offer an approving. Um, Got to go on the regular. regular. Yeah. And I'll offer the second motion that's required as well, as explained by Mr. Tiramina. Correct. Also for the regular. I just. Um, sure. Are you all set? Yes. Okay. I have a question. What time do you start your millionaire parties? Uh, they start. Uh, at 11 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. And then they, they go, uh, depending on what charities, what charities come in, they go from 11 o'clock to till like six o'clock and then there's downtime. It's all monitored by the state. The state makes them do this. So they stop for an hour and then another charity comes in. Um, we've done a lot. We've done the Livonia Firefighters, um, done a couple, uh, Livonia Stevenson out of the eight mile location. So. Um, it's actually been a uh, pretty stress-free type environment. Everybody associates it with maybe kind of being a different crowd, but there, it's been really good. Good, so. and you have to; those cannot run. And I, I know this is all um, state law, jurisdiction, state jurisdiction, not city. Those events have to end at midnight. Is that correct? No, they can go till two o'clock in the morning. They can. I yeah. thought there had been a change. How no, it's a, it depends on the license that the charity gets, but they can go from, they can go run all the way till 2 a.m. Okay, and how late do, do you have? Uh, we've had charities do 2 a.m. Okay. Yeah. Just, all right. Um, it, it gives the charity a little bit more opportunity to have a good fundraiser or so. All right. Great. Thank you. I have no. Thank you. No concerns. Okay. Anyone else on the council? Anyone from the audience? Uh, you have an approving, and uh, we'll see you on the third. Thank you. Okay, Thank you. congratulations. All right. Uh, item 11 is a Greenbelt Petition Planning Commission. From our Planning Commission, Petition 201904GB01, submitted by Plymouth Woods Apartments, LLC, to substitute a Greenbelt for a protective wall, as outlined in Section 18.44. 45 of the zoning ordinance of the city of Livonia is amended for property located on the south side of Plymouth Road in the southwest quarter of section 30. Mr. Termi. Thank you. Uh, Plymouth Woods is an apartment complex that is uh, located on the south side of Plymouth Road uh, between Newburgh and Eccles and complex was uh, approved and developed in the late 1980s. Uh, the, there are residential properties, uh, single family residential properties on, uh, on, on three sides uh, of the development, uh, including a, a parcel uh, that is located in, near the center of the uh, development's frontage on Plymouth Road. It's a, a single house and uh, the situation has existed uh, since the, the project was developed. Uh, the, the Zoning Board of Appeals granted uh, a number of variances over the years to waive the uh, masonry wall around the three sides of the property that the apartment complex um, is located. Uh, and the petitioner at this point is now um, seeking a permanent solution uh, by requesting the green belt in lieu of the uh, required wall, thereby avoiding the need to go back to the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals on a regular basis. Uh, we had no objections from the homeowner. The green belt standards are more than adequate uh, in this case. Uh, the separation between the apartment buildings and, and the house, um, the, there's adequate distance as well as uh, berming and, and landscaping. The Planning Commission uh, approved 
uh, the, uh, the green belt with a number of stipulations, including that if uh, the effectiveness of the green belt is ever um, um, substantiated or, or substandard, uh, you know, if, if something causes it to be diminished, that the uh, petitioner would either have to erect a wall or, or make the, uh, the landscaping uh, corrections. But as of today, uh, all of the, uh, the trees that surround the property are, are mature. Uh, they include uh, a number of uh, uh, evergreen trees, uh, junipers, Austrian pines, as well as uh, other deciduous trees. So, Great. Thank you. thank you very much. To the petitioner. Hello. And representative for Plymouth Woods. Yeah. Renee Sturgill, rep representing Plymouth Woods Apartments. Thank you. Worked there a long time, Renee? 23 years. I thought so. Wow. Okay. Go right ahead, Councilman Barsar. Um, through the chair to Mark, is Part of the reason that we haven't made this permanent before, just to have the accountability of them coming back to check on the condition of that, or has it simply been something we've just never moved to do to make it permanent? It's something that they've never chose to do. The, uh, the, the um, language was added to the ordinance, I believe, in the early 2000s at a time when I think they had just obtained their either their approval from that resident who lives in that house uh, or a variance or both. And, and so that carried for a number of years. Uh, I think they've done that a couple of times. So um, there, there's really not been an, an issue that we're aware of. And why they haven't done this sooner, I don't know. Other, you know yeah, I know we've had that. some issues with other green belts in the city that haven't been well maintained, but I also know there's some renewed efforts to um, to follow up on these kind of things to make sure that you know when we put those types of conditions and resolutions Correct. that they're uh, they're held to that and uh, I think we can if we're going to do a renewed effort in that front we need to trust our process and that that will hold people to that I do think in this case looking at the map if I was that homeowner I would want a green belt instead of a wall I mean this isn't a situation where you have you know a, a row of houses separating from a commercial district this is literally a, a house surrounded by something different and um, if I were that homeowner, I would think that it makes a lot of sense to have a green belt surrounding me versus a, a three walls on three sides of my property. Um, so having said all that, I'd offer an approval on this for consent if there's no objection. Thank you very much. Uh, Councilman Barr has offered an approval on consent. Were there any others? Anyone from the audience? Hearing and seeing no one, you have an approving on consent, which means you don't have to come back unless thank you, you really want to. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk, we're all set on that, and uh, this ends our um, agenda. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak to the council on any manner that hadn't appeared in front of us on the yellow agenda? Seeing and hearing none, um, we are adjourned.